Hey guys, Quentin from FanDrake.com. It's Friday, October 29th, and that means it's AppCast Friday. Going to take a look at some apps, uh, some that are in beta, some that aren't in the market, some that are in the market. So uh, whatever it is, it's going to be an app. We're going to take a look at it. Uh, the first being Power Amp for Android 2.0 Plus. It's in beta right now uh, by a Russian developer named Max over at XDA. Well, he signed up at XDA after they gave him... Uh, exposure, initial exposure, but um, I believe this is going to be one of the best music apps in the market when it does come out for three major reasons, at least for me personally. Uh, first of all, being Equalizer. Um, now, this isn't an Android first, uh, but it just looks a lot cleaner than any other solution you've seen in the market. Full 10 amp, uh, I'm sorry, 10 band uh, equalizer with preamp controls, you have presets and everything like that, so uh, rock and classical, dance, rap, hip hop, whatever. Um, that's pretty nice. You can set your bass and treble right here, volume and everything like that. Um, I'm not a big U key guy, but like I don't customize my own bands, but I do like to use it, uh, the presets that come with whatever app it's in. So that's pretty nice. Um, second reason being. Uh, folder support. You can actually look at your um, music by folder by the way you actually have it set up on your SD card. And this is the way I prefer to do it on the desktop. To, to, so to have it in the mobile uh, a mobile offering is uh, pretty nice. I actually like to be able to look through the folders instead of relying on the phone to organize it correctly into albums and artists and things like that. So um, that's very very good and no I have no idea why Susan Boyle is on my SD card seriously I don't that's t probably one of the other biggest things that the final thing that I love is the ability to set individual folders um, to pull music into because I also like to listen to podcasts and I use that I do that in another app now I hate when the music apps bring in all of the audio files so I'll get all the podcast stuff um, with everything else and that is just so frustrating for me so to be able to set which individual folders you want to scan for music is just a godsend for me uh, that's probably the biggest three reasons why why it will be my uh, it, it will be my favorite app when it whenever it launches in the Android market uh, but there are also a whole host of other options you have themes um, different options when you set plug in your headset um, just a lot of a lot of uh, the ability to customize it is just crazy. Um, how, however you want it to work, it'll work for you. You don't work for it, it works for you, if that makes sense. But, uh, <laughs> um, oh yeah, and the ability to make playlists, that's nothing new, but it's just so easy on here. You can add a new playlist and add a song to it. It's just, uh, looks very, for a beta, it's very fully featured. Um, there are a few problems. Uh, the bass doesn't sound all too great when you have it up high. Um, and also, you get a lot of force closes if you um, <clears throat> if you start listening to music and you go into another app, but that's about it. Um, when it does come to the Android market, I expect it to be stable. Uh, the developer, he's very talented, it seems, and uh, it looks like it's going to be one of the best. Uh, it's going to be paid, of course, when you go into settings. You can see there, buy power amp. Not sure if there's going to be an ad-supported version, but I do believe that when this launches, it's going to be... Uh, worth every penny if you do end up having to buy it. So that was Power Amp by Max over at XDA. Uh, should be seeing it sometime soon. Dolphin Browser has also been updated recently to version 4.0. Um, I left Dolphin back in version 3.0 because there were a ton of bugs, and I'm sure uh, a lot of people would agree <laughs> agree with me. Is it just it got ridiculous? Um, specifically, the biggest issue was this little slide out. You know, the little slide out. Uh, pain or whatever it would slide out even if you're like in the middle of a page so say I was um, zoomed all the way in on something and I needed to scroll it would it wouldn't let me scroll it would just bring that pop-up out but now that's all been fixed um, everything seems a lot faster actually uh, rendering speeds are insanely fast compared to stock for me at least um, and I think to get a even like this is the on the Evo um, the the processing power in the GPU isn't that great, but it's still ridiculously fast to zoom and pinch to zoom compared to how uh, slow it was before. Now the only problem I'm still having on certain sites is that the text doesn't reflow whenever you uh, pinch to zoom like that. You have to double tap it to get it to reflow, um, which is kind of a a bummer. 
in that case I'll just rather double tap the zoom anyway but um, yeah I'm hoping that <laughs> in, in whatever next version there is uh, he gets that fixed up I'm actually gonna send a uh, a bug report myself for that because that would be the only thing keeping me from using it full time and actually I only have that problem on the Evo now when I use it on the Samsung Mesmerizer near the Galaxy S phone um, where is Dolphin? I just downloaded it on this one. Not sure. There it is. Um, everything reflows as it should. Actually, no, it doesn't. Wait, yep, there it goes. So I'm not sure if it has to do with. See, there it's not reflowing when you zoom out, which is quite odd. It's, yeah. Um, so it's still a couple bugs, but at least they got the scrolling fixed because that was the biggest problem. Sometimes you wouldn't be able to look at a web page the way you needed to. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go back to Dolphin for my stock browser experience now. Uh, it's everything else is just the same as before. You have tabs, um, a, a whole ton of options. You go into the settings menu. Uh, where is it? Here. Whoops. Um, also, another thing, I'm not sure if the, I'm not even sure if this was in 3.0, uh, but bookmarks you can now organize by folder, and you can't have tiered folders. You can only have uh, links within one set of folders, so you can't have a folder underneath a folder. But um, you can at least uh, make folders now. And I know that's the one thing that many were missing from, like, say, coming from uh, the iPhone and Safari, allowing you to set set up folders and and your bookmarks or whatever. So uh, that's a pretty cool feature I think I'm not the one to really use bookmarks all that extensively on my phone but uh, if that's something you've been missing uh, coming from iOS or if it's something you just been wanting um, out of a browser then Dolphin is gonna be your best bet uh, then of course there are a ton of plugins a, t a lot more since I last checked uh, one that I like to use is the Alexa plugin to see uh, what a site's Alexa rank is uh, whenever you click it and that's in my opinion pretty cool because I, I like to check out how a site is doing especially me being a former uh, a, a former website owner you know how important Alexa is so um, to be able to look at it at a glance and just you know that's pretty cool so yeah Dolphin Browser 4.0 in the Android market now go ahead and download it check it out Next up, I want to talk about is Black Moon Attach Save, and uh, it's really not much to it. It allows you to download attachments from uh, Gmail, and that in itself is <laughs> the biggest feature that you're going to love, just because I don't know what it is with Google and attachments and uh, or whatnot, but the reason they only allow you to download APK files and images, which is pretty uh, restricting as far as uh, a lot of users go like a lot of users would love to use the Gmail client but they can't because they need to be able to download attachments and uh, Google uh, Gmail only lets you preview them on Android but with Black Moon Attach Save uh, you can actually download them just as you traditionally would so uh, if I go into my Android email and uh, look for an email with an attachment that I otherwise wouldn't be able to download say mm, no, that's not going to be one. Um, I'm just looking for... Can you sort by attachments? I don't think you can. Nope. I should have probably looked for one before I started recording. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to find one. If it takes all day. Come on, I know I have more than... <clears throat> okay, so here's one. I think. Yeah, so we have an XLS spreadsheet here. Um, and normally you wouldn't be able to download You don't even see a download button. You just see preview. Um, so when I press preview and it says fishing attachment, I can actually set it to actually open in either documents to go or quick office. Or I can use uh, black moon attach save. And you just go ahead and use by default for this action, click it, and then you can save it to wherever you want. So you can search um, for whatever folder you want to put it in. This is going to be my downloads folder, so I'll say OK. Um, attachment 1, you can name it whatever you want, and then you can just go ahead and save it. And then that's it. After that, it's going to allow you to open it up right away. But um, let's just go back into, uh, let's go into my file browser to downloads. 
and it should be attachment one or I don't know what that is. is that the one we just done no that's an HTML file here it is and you can just open it spreadsheets to go accept whatever later so um yeah uh, just an easy way to download attachments nothing too uh, complicated but that is one feature that everyone is <laughs> waiting for from G from Google themselves so uh, until they do that this is gonna be your only option